everyone, it is another build order tutorial. This time I have a PVZ, a really recent PVZ, and a popular one shown at IEM Katowice by Zest against every single Zerg basically that he faced in that tournament. It is none other than Zest himself showing us how to do a four gate adept attack. Let's get into it. Send that probe to the low ground. We're gonna start off with a 13 pylon, not a regular 14 and send that probe over to scout and block the hatchery first. Chrono, the Nexus. And send a probe down to the low ground again. Gateway. Assimilator. With the gas done, put one probe in and rally the rest in. Twenty Nexus. And twenty Cybernetics Core. Another assimilator. Pylon. Put two probes into that second gas and rally in the third one. Build a stalker once the cybernex core is done and start warp gates and give your nexus another chrono. Twilight Council. Chrono, the natural nexus. Robotics. Second gateway. At this point, Zest was attacked, but ideally you are not. Get a third gateway. Start up Resident Glaives. And another gateway. Chrono boost resident glaives and start a warp prism, which you should also chrono. Get another pylon. Make sure not to get supply blocked from here on out. Warp in your adepts when your gateways finish. You should have at least three, if not four. And hopefully the soccer's still alive to block the wall. Pick up the adepts, grab an observer from the robo. If your soccer is still alive, you can take the time to kill the peeping overlord. Grab a third gas at this point. Warp in four more adepts on the front line. And start your attack around 4:30 is the ideal halt your pro production as well as you should already be saturated regardless and you'll be delaying that third nexus until you find it the appropriate time to actually start macroing 
This is where it's kind of up to you. Either continue with the adept attack, at least one more warp in, or emergency macro mode if they're totally prepared. When you do decide to macro, start up the pro production a little bit again and decide if you need to immediately get an immortal or if you can actually grab your third nexus. The adepts are being used as both a scout and harassment or they're straight up winning you the game at this point. With that done, let's move on to the build order discussion. The strengths of the build. A 13 pylon probe scout can stop most, if not all, hatch firsts on a map pool that has a not ridiculous rush distance, I suppose. And uh, it is something that you can do, but generally it is a 14 pylon. This one's a little bit special. The attack is fairly strong, and it can be molded into either harassment or you can dedicate to it, or you can macro out of it. But Reminder, if all your depths die, and you're just like, oh, I'll just macro, uh, they can counterattack, and you might die to it. So, study up, learn, do the build over and over again, and eventually you'll have that nice feeling of when you can actually macro, or when you can just straight up kill the Zerg. It's a simple enough build order. There's not really much that you do, even in regards to making units. You don't really do that until you're ready to attack. So, it's a pretty one, uh, simple one to learn. There's also a strong chance to do some damage. Maybe not outright kill the Zerg player, although if, they un if it's unscouted, I mean, then go ahead. But it has a chance to do something. It can clear up creep with that observer. It can use the warp prism to run around the bases. It can kill queens that are on the edge of creep. It can kill lings, because they're the first ones to respond. Roach is a little bit slower, or it can actually just straight up kill a bunch of drones. Whatever way you do it, it has a chance to actually do some damage. The weaknesses of this build. The 13 pylon probe scout. It does delay your macro ever so slightly. Actually building this build order tutorial and relating it to the stats macro tutorial I did just last week showed me that it does certainly offset your nexus timings and as such your macro. Probe scout is your only scout. In this game, Zest did grab a second adept, but that was when he was under a bit of pressure. Just a couple of lings, but too many for his stalker alone to handle. Usually in a PvZ, you're doing a probe scout into a depth scout, and honestly into an oracle scout, Stargate being so popular. But in this build, you're doing just the probe scout, so be very sure not to lose that probe, and know what to look for as well. The lack of third, the lack of drones at a natural, the amount of gas geysers that are taken, and so on. There's only one unit for defense as well. That's stalker. That's it. And if you want to kill an overlord, well, you better put a probe in there. You can get the adept just like Zess did, and that'll move your resident glaive's timing just a little bit off and such, but it is possible, and you should definitely do so if you are being attacked. Don't sacrifice your entire game because you need to do exactly what this build order states. The adept attack can technically be held with very little damage. I hesitate to ever say it can be held perfectly just because adepts are nasty little suckers and a warp prism combination makes them extremely potent, but it can be held with very little damage taken. This build does require good adept control, and I know many of you are going to go, you know, Keck XD, adept control, it is a skill. So if you don't have the ability to use adepts well, this might not work out for you well until you learn to do so. Tips and tricks. That 13 pylon probe scout isn't a requirement. Experiment with a regular 14 pylon and see how that works for you. The benefit of blocking a hatchery, basically always, is, I mean, it's a few things. It is a few small things. And honestly, until you're reaching up to those heights of at least masters, if not just straight up into the professional play, it's not going to be as impactful. But I think one thing is for sure, it always tilts a Zerg player. So if you're the type of person who wants to tilt a Zerg player and then tilt them more, 
With an adept attack, well, then you might want to do it. Use a probe to block the wall if stalker is needed elsewhere to kill a pesky little overlord to kill the peeping overlord on a lot of the peep spots. The probe is uh, inexpensive, slight loss of mining, but will hold for basically a second, but hopefully a second that could save your life. Get used to adept shadings as soon as possible. That's what I'm talking about. Adept shading is actually a bit of a skill. You try and do it the first time, you need to Protoss, you need to using Adepts, you're going to fail hard. And you're going to be like, how does this ever work? A lot of it is their ability to judge engagements and where their opponent would have units and how much damage they can do. A lot of it is microing the Adepts to actually target fire the drones and even, you know, individually targeting, targeting Adepts on those drones is a uh, very good sign of someone who's good with Adepts and StarCraft 2, just generally good. But Adept Shading... The shade is the threat. If you're not shading, if you're just staying in place, even if you're grabbing drone kills, then the Zerg player is going to be able to take out your depths eventually. A more ideal situation is that you shade and you say, oh, I don't need to shade. You cancel the shade. Oh, I do need to shade. You shade. And the Zerg player has to take both threats seriously. So get used to shading as soon as possible. Use the warp prism to kill peeping overlord. That is generally what happens, but Zest lost his stalker and didn't really want to remake another one. But it should be something that you can grab. It's going to see the Warp Prism either way, but at least grab 100 minerals and a potential supply block. Keep pressure on with the Warp Prism. Harassment while you macro. So if you say, okay, I've done enough or I'm not doing anything, then at least grab four adepts on that Warp Prism and run around and try and get some drones somewhere. It'll either mess up their macro, force their roaches to come back so you can macro, or actually just tilt the favor to you if they're macroing as well. There's still that chance to do some damage and get ahead. That's it for this build order tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's more of a, you know, an, an attack build order that can actually give you a little more fun than just playing macro and waiting for the Zerg player to dictate the pace of the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it helps you in your StarCraft II ladder experience. And I hope to see you guys next week for another build order tutorial.